What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I know I'm happy to be here at work. It's getting cold outside again. It was nice this weekend, but um, there was yet another interesting uh, hit piece dropped this weekend, and uh, it just gets completely BTFO'd. Every time one of these clowns from like the Daily Beast or the Huffington Post tries to go after somebody like Tim Poole, um, my heart is filled with hope because they get absolutely ratioed into oblivion. You know, I could learn a lot actually from Tim. He never really addresses these things when they're written um, or when people make videos about him, he just stays focused and stays the course. Uh, I'm less good at that, but uh, this one is, is hilarious. We'll look at the article of course, but I wanna share the response initially to it because that's even more hilarious. And all of that after a quick word from this video sponsor, Private Internet Access. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Private Internet Access. Hey, October is Cybersecurity Month, and they've got an amazing offer for you. It's 2021. If you don't have a VPN yet, there are several reasons why you want to sign up today. One, you can browse anonymously. Keep your browsing habits to yourself. You can keep your data away from big tech so that they can't resell it. And you can access region locked content so you can open up a whole new catalog of online content to enjoy, whether it's anime or movies that might not be available in your area. You can get at it using a VPN. And the VPN I use on my phone, my tablets, my PCs, and my laptops is private internet access. And they've given an amazing offer. It's just $1.98 a month with four months free with a three-year subscription. If you haven't signed up today, use my link in the description or pin comment down below to get private internet access today. Now this tweet from verified journalist, blue check mark, Andy Campbell, senior editor at Huffington Post, uh, who covers misinformation. Again, anytime someone says misinformation, they are more than likely talking about information they don't like. Uh, followed by Liz Finnegan. Liz. Um, so he writes, Tim Poole and his fellow far right carnival barkers have been working this whole year to sanitize J6 defendants and their actions as well as own respon as their own responsibility in the attacks. Oh, so it was Tim's fault. I see Tim who hasn't been out in public in two years is definitely out there fighting for the cause. They downplay, Poole was downplaying J6 days before it even happened. So it was, what was it? It was a couple of people that, that uh, it was a couple of people that got out of control and acted very poorly. Um, there were people among that, in that group that acted poorly. There also were people in that group, in my opinion, that were not good faith actors. We'll put it that way. They glow in the dark a little bit. You see here, ah, yes, J6, the day some regular everyday normal people were let into the Capitol by the PD to walk around and kick their feet up on couches. 122 likes. The, all these are ratioing him. Tim Pool's podcast is really good. A thousand likes. You know, I'm such of a, I'm something of an effing idiot myself. 300 likes. If no one knows who you are and you're supposed to do journalism, you can always journalism about someone who's famous. 200 likes. I mean, this is almost as bad as this banger from two days ago. Tucker Carlson told his audience on Thursday that he knows why, who should replace former CNN Jeff Zucker. It should be Jeffrey Tubin. Oh, he made a joke. Why are you lying? Calling Tim Pool far right. Still milking the J6 narrative for all it's worth. No normal people out there. Look. I'm tell there were people there that broke the law and they should have they should face legal consequences for that. There are also many people from the summer of love, the B the summer of BLM love from uh, rich middle class white kids uh, from the suburbs. There are many of them that broke the law that never faced any kind of legal uh, ramifications either. In a perfect world, both of them would. There's nothing wrong with people assembling peacefully. And I think we can all agree that there was a small handful of people that got a little too out of control. But it certainly was not an insurrection. 
we had morons like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez was two, three blocks away, and she capitalized on it like she was on the front lines on D Day. Lol, far right. Haha, <laughs> you are obviously jealous. Pool is a centrist. Now that Luke, he's a crazy one. You should keep an eye on him. I mean, there's not a single person like who reads these the articles. Tim Pool is literally more politically left than right, and you would know that if you listen to his podcast rather than reading the mainstream news. Like, what is this? I mean, I, why are they so afraid of Tim? And then they put up this, you know, while hanging out with the leader of the Proud Boys. This is on February 6th. Um, Tim Pool says the J6 defendants shouldn't be charged with crimes because there were no, no trespassing signs. Well, I suppose uh, I'd need more than 90 seconds, 80 seconds of context. But I also know I saw videos of people getting let in. I also know that we look at this person, Madeline Peltz, getting crushed in the replies too. Who do you write for? MMFA. What's this? I'm probably blocked. No. Oh, for Media Matters. Ah, of course. Of course. Of course you write about that. First Amendment protesting is covered. Um, it was a public place. Now, I don't know if I would hang my hat on the uh, there were no signs thing, but and it looks like clearly there were signs. But like, yes, these people breaking down windows broke the law. It's just, I, I mean, they did. They broke the law. Property damage, obviously. They are not walking in the front door. Uh, this kind of stuff. But like, people that and then these are, but these are the very same people, by the way, that said everything that happened in the summer of love, you know, billions and billions of dollars. He's still, he's still trending billions and billions of dollars, uh, in damage, burning down whole cities. Uh, they, they of course did nothing wrong. It's weird how the, these like nobody look at, here's another nobody. Oh, from media matters. What a coincidence. 37, 38,000 followers can barely muster 100 likes. And you see here, the comments on this post, yikes, no sensible person is arguing it's okay to say it. It was clearly avoidable in those instances, but it does matter that he was talking about the word, not directing the word at somebody. That difference matters. Of course, talking about, you know, the media matters jumped on trying to like, Deplatform Rogan, and this goes back to this stupid article that never got off the ground. How coward and phony Tim Pool became one of the biggest political YouTubers on the planet. Is he? Is he one of the biggest political YouTubers on the planet? I suppose you could make that argument. Um, certainly, the Young Turks are pretty big. Steven Crowder's pretty big. Uh, ben Shapiro's pretty big. Um, half the people at, at Daily Wire are pretty big. Matt Walsh is pretty big. I mean, he's not like he's small, but why do you think they fear him so much? They're still trying to make this pathetic hit piece from August a thing and nobody cares. And the problem is, you know, there's a couple of, there's a handful of ex-employees from Tim who I don't know if their criticisms or their critiques are legitimate or not, but they are feeding articles like this uh, to the Daily Beast in quotes. And they, they, there's several of them that have aired grievances about Tim to me because they think I don't like Tim. Um, and maybe they're right. I don't know. But they're always just, I wasn't there. I don't know. There's some lawsuit going on. I'm, I'm told between him and some of his former employees. I don't know. I wasn't there, but all these things that uh, every article, all the, all these, hit, you know, these pathetic reattempted hit pieces, just trying to bring them up any chance they get. 
You have another, this Matthew Sheffield, another worthless uh, blue check mark. Joe Rogan fans often point to his fig leaf endorsement of Bernie as proof that Rogan is a right wing, but right wingers overwhelmingly are his favorite. And you can see from his guest list. Let's see who they call right wing. Roseanne Barr, she's not right wing. Carl Benjamin, classical liberal. Owen Benjamin, I would assume he's right wing. Um, Russell Brand, not right wing. Um, Tim Dillon, I don't think he's that right wing. I guess I don't know. Tulsi Gabbard's literally a Democrat. Um, Michael Malice, I don't think he's right wing. He's more like anarchy guy, right? Uh, Tim Pool, he's not right wing. Not like hard. Okay, Ben Shapiro is unapologetically conservative. Okay. Milo is probably too. Dana, I don't know. Dana's a free speech guy. Stefan Molyneux, he's probably <laughs> unapologetically right wing. But like, what do you mean? Like, you talking about, again, this is another, he's the founder of Discover Flux. It's a media platform with in depth coverage of politics. In depth, you idiots don't even know. You don't take two seconds to research what somebody's political leanings are before you label them as such. And this whole article, I've talked about it before, is pathetic. And look at what they, a coward, and a phony, a joke, staggeringly, air, staggeringly, staggeringly arrogant, totally full of S, not smart, a bumbling doofus. A representative sample of how those who worked with Pool at digital media companies described him. I just wonder how many of them have gone on to have any kind of success. Probably none, right? Tim is arrogant. That's for sure. He's, I mean, I don't think he would even deny that. The guy, you know, doesn't take criticism well. But if that's your biggest complaint about it, I mean, I, I just don't know how it warrants a 450-page document trying to smear the guy. And then you have the entire entirety of left-wing media desperately trying to make this hit piece a thing again and nobody cares about it nobody cares because these people are like outright liars it would be funny it would be interesting if any of these people who hate tim pool or wrote these articles for anything other than to get clicks actually had any evidence actually had anything interesting to say other than the same he's right wing why reasons sources dude trust me bro oh he's responsible for j6 how well i don't know these people are pathetic and i will always defend uh truth over these smears regardless of the side you're on but the idea that you think tim pool tulsi gabbard tim dylan and the and the wine scenes are and russell brand are all right wing like these people are openly lying and I'm glad that people keep calling it out. Keep it up. The tides are turning. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out Private Internet Access before the day is out. Take advantage of that offer. We'll talk to you again real soon.